So Don, Johnny, and I are in the Tesla, and we're headed down to Fayetteville to go to the Airborne Special Operations Museum. This is a museum that um, I went to one time before with Joey and Johnny when they were really little. I'll have to go see what year that was, but we were with our uh, dear friends, the Vollmer family. Uh, they're a U.S. Air Force family currently stationed in Colorado Springs at the U.S. Air Force Academy, and uh, when they were here, um, we did quite a few military themed outings and this was one of them. It's a great museum, it's free. It's open um, every day of the week except for Mondays and they have you know standard business hours like 10 to five except for Sundays, I think one to five. So at any point, uh, have Tesla will go. That's kind of my motto, right? Wanna check out someplace different. And uh, I'm gonna plug in the address now and see um, where we're going. So it's not very far from uh, Fuquay down to Fayetteville, basically take Highway 401 the entire way. Um, it's showing that when we arrive the car will be at 66% battery and after the return trip home will be at 52%. It's 51 miles, uh, excuse me, it's 37 miles, 51 minutes down there. We had guesstimated it was about an hour in each direction. And I understand the time at this museum is something two hours or less, depending on how much reading you do. So we should be good. Now notice there is a supercharger down here in Lumberton, which is a good click south of Fayetteville off I-95. And we won't need to go there today or have any reason to be concerned about that because we have plenty of charge for the round trip. But uh, on my targets is to find something to do that will take us at some point through the Lumberton supercharger. Okay, so we have ordered a new circular polarized filter for our dash cam. It should cut down on glare. And Tecmon said that in the case of being in an accident, it would help you see inside of other vehicles a little bit better. He kind of showed a demonstration of that. It's polarized. It's polarized. So we're going to give it a try today and see what the difference is. He did not notice any um, degradation in picture quality with it. So we're going to give it a try. So I had kind of this cool idea last night. I think that every time I go to a new supercharger, I should earn a badge. Kind of like a little game. Be really fun for kids in the car. Be fun for adults too, to um, keep track of where we've been. Because you know, people with Teslas, they, we like to go for drives. Um, I imagine I'm not the only person that ever went to a supercharger just to say, mm, hey, stopped at that supercharger. Be nice if the car kept up with that, you know. Um, I just, I just think it would be cool. Don's laughing at me. He can laugh at me. What do you think, Donnie? Yeah, well, they should, Tesla should put one of those passport stamps at every supercharger now, so you can mark, buy your passport book, and then you can have it stamped. That's what Kit would like. Right. He jests a little bit, but I'm serious. I'd like a Easter egg. It lets me go in and click and look at all the superchargers I've been to with a nice little picture for each oh, each well, one of them. Get, you get booty if, if you visit five superchargers. <laughs> superchargers. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, exactly. So we're here and uh, Johnny's been very interested in the flags that are flying out in front of the museum. There's uh, United States, North Carolina, POW, MIA, and one for each branch of the military. This is a very pretty building. I'm not sure what year it opened, but it is relatively uh, a newer building. It is hot out here, like really hot, so going inside is going to be great. Breeze is great. If it wasn't for the breeze, whoo. Oh, the cold air feels wonderful.
We decided it was time to add parachute troops to its weapons arsenal, authorizing the establishment of the Parachute Test Platoon, the act that began the inspiring story of the United States Army Air Force. Johnny's interested in this older motorcycle and World War II Jeep. Kind of looks like uh, something a little bit similar to what we would see on MASH, but of course that was the Korean War. Airplane. When we went to the Cherry Point Air Show this year, we were in several cargo aircraft. Wow, that's a practice jump from 1945. Look how they filled the sky. C-47 hangs overhead in the museum and simulates a uh, airborne guy about ready to use his parachute to jump out. These tall photographic panels are pretty impressive. Fan of photography, I find these old war photos to be quite interesting. When I came around the corner the first time, I didn't realize this was a glider. I just, it doesn't fit into what I think gliders look like. And Don was explaining to me that, yep, that's a glider and... Right, they were towed behind like C-47s. In England, they had really long runways so they could get them enough speed up on the long runway being towed by C-47 that the gliders could go into the air and they would literally tow it across the channel into wherever they were trying to get, you know, had a cable hooked to the C-47, and then they would let it go, and the glider would glide down and land. There were 14,000 of them built. Wow. Later on, they figured out a way to recover the gliders where the C-47 would fly by with the drag hook and grab it, and would actually lift the glider off the ground, and that's how they evacuated some of the injured and wounded soldiers. I read a sign over there that said that some of them were built by the Ford Motor Company during the war. Yeah, they said uh, they built 4,190 of them. Wow. There's the list of the manufacturers there. They're basically just metal frames covered with canvas. Way cool. What interests you here? Um, they've got, they've got, the war, and they've got the war. 
right? During some of these modern engagements, I guess they had what we would consider more modern conveniences. So Johnny found these cool Lego type brick tech compatible sets, very cool stuff. So what kind of souvenirs do you find at the U.S. Airborne Museum? Well, of course, t-shirts with uh, various patches and logos on them. Decals for your car. History books. And teddy bears. <laughs> Soldier teddy bears. What a gorgeous tree, just beautiful, wonderful canopy. So Don spotted that we were near the uh, train station in Fayetteville. Has a very, very, very long train platform. We were hoping we might be lucky and, you know, a train might just come along. That would be awesome. Coming back in from the other side. Beautiful tall ceiling here. Really. enlightening visit at the uh, U.S. Airborne and Special Operations Museum in Fayetteville. We uh, did end up spending about uh, two hours there, which was what they had told us the average would be. Um, there were a lot of... Um, <laughs> there were a lot of things to read, which were really informative. There was some movies going on, video clips. There were some sound effects. Um, I feel like in school, the students kind of get up to World War II and then the history after that, the in-depth history sort of fades. I still don't feel like I know enough about the history that has actually occurred during my own lifetime. Like I know more about, you know, World War II, World War I, uh, Vietnam and some of these other uh, things that happened versus what went on at uh, Desert Storm and is still going on over in the Middle East today. But at any point, I was really impressed with Johnny. He took an uh, interest in reading a lot of the exhibits along with me and Don, and uh, certainly a wonderful thing to do for free on a uh, hot summer's day because it was very nicely air conditioned in there.
So Joey and I are pulled over here at the Fuquay Library getting ready to fight a raid battle in 78, 77, 76 seconds. We, uh, Johnny's not with us, but we have his phone, so he's also in the gym. And it's for a magic carp of all things. But we wonder if we get this really high CP magic carp, if it would uh, evolve into a great Gyarados. dose. So uh, we're gonna give it a try. So Joey's giving me a hard time because I said Gyarados. It's Gyarados. Right, or Gyrometer, or Gyro, or, or, or something like that. Okay, hang on, we're gonna miss our battle. Yeah. All right, that was the quickest battle in history. It took what, 20 seconds yeah, maybe? Maybe 10. We suffered no damage and we got 3000 XP, but our magic harp was just like the normal range, like, you know, 125 or something. It, it, it really wasn't much, so. But the 3000 XP for, you know, 10, 15 seconds worth of work, that was way worth it. Good morning. I'll get your food. 